Welcome to Exquisitely Aligned. You may be on your path to having it all, a house, family, money, travel, when suddenly something shatters your ideal world. It shifts your perspective. You are grateful for all that you have, yet you realize or maybe decide having it all isn't all that. It may leave you feeling unhappy, unsatisfied, or unfulfilled. You're left wanting something even more fulfilling, but typically you can't quite put it into words. Others, they just don't get it. They try to pacify you. And that, well, that may leave you feeling a bit guilty. I get it. I've stood in your shoes. Hi, I'm Gina, the escape artist expert. Today we'll be discussing grace under fire how to be your own kind of champion. I'm really excited to be with you today. You can say I'm on fire and no, it's not a hot flash, although it is warm outside. I'm on fire thinking about you being your own kind of champion. I know that's exactly what's missing when I look out the window, out into my world from my desk today. You taking on that role even more seriously, even more intentionally, and being supported or cheered on for doing so. First, let's journey back to February 6, 1952, the very day that Queen Elizabeth II would be given her title. Picture it. Now, I wasn't born back then, but I do know that was a time when women were asked to be seen but not heard. And in some places and some cultures, this still rings true today. Maybe you felt that pressure at certain times in your life. It's stifling, isn't it? It's a way of keeping us playing smaller than we're supposed to. Sound familiar? Yes, you got it, the conformity trap. A world begging us to conform, asking us to give up parts of ourselves in order to fit in, to play the role of the beautiful and quiet woman, to follow the rules, to be easy on the eyes and smile, or in this case, smile and wave. I believe Queen Elizabeth II probably felt that I believe she knew very well what the world expected of her. I know as a parent, when the kids were young, there were times I wanted them to be seen and not heard, to keep quiet. I'm laughing inside because I distinctly remember when my brother was marrying Heather, they planned a beautiful ceremony at the Biltmore in Asheville, North Carolina. The weather was ideal and they looked stunning. Everything was perfect. My handsome nephews were young. They were handed a large Ziploc bag with Cheerios. They were very excited. Instead of it sitting in the seats they were given, they quietly made their way to the front and sat themselves without spilling all the Cheerios between all of the guests and the bride and groom who were behind them. At first, we each gasped and we held our breath to watch what would happen next. And they sat very quietly, dressed like little gentlemen, facing all of us with a bag full of Cheerios. They were seen and not heard. They were quiet as they could be, making sure they each got their turn to shove their hand into the bag and pull out a fist full of yummies. It was quite a scene, one to remember. It's especially fun now because they are taller than I am when I'm not wearing my platforms. I too use Cheerios to quiet my children a time or two. Do you have a Cheerio memory? Do you have a memory of being asked as an adult to keep quiet or being given the eye the way my mother used to give the eye? I tried it with my kids. It didn't work. Or maybe you've been hushed, told what you have to say is not as important as what maybe somebody else has to say. 
It's not nice. It's uncomfortable. It can make us upset or frustrated. We have beliefs that need to be expressed out into the world. We have passions. We have purpose. I've been hushed. I've been hushed as an adult and it left me angry. What about you? Has this ever happened to you? So back to February 6, 1952, some seven decades ago, imagine what a futurist the queen was ahead of her time. She was able to be inspired by the future and what the future could be. And she was able to inspire others to believe the same. Think about how revolutionary a concept that was and how she was. For her to realize what others believed about her, to know in her heart what she was capable of and decide to be courageous, to break free from that small mindedness of her peers. She was determined to go against the norm and do it gracefully. Instead of being seen and not heard, she courageously chose to be seen, to be believed. Imagine for a moment what that must have taken for her, a female during the early 50s, who wasn't originally supposed to be the queen. She had to be steadfast. She had to be strong in her beliefs in herself. Her all-knowing, her inner voice, her inner authority, her gut instinct, her divine essence. I don't know what her preference would have been, but those are a few of the words I like to call it. A strong knowing, a knowing with every ounce of her being. Your soul level truth, the one that's written on your soul, the one only you know. I'm guessing she knew. I'm guessing this feeling was intense. I'm guessing she couldn't deny it. And I'm guessing if she did deny it, it would have felt uncomfortable. Talk about courage. Talk about being brave. Talk about stepping into your calling. She did all that and even more and with grace. And I would say grace and glamour. Such glamour. You know, fashion runs deep in my veins, but let's leave that for a little bit later. She acknowledged the times. She acknowledged the fact that the beliefs of the masses ran deep. She didn't rebel. No, she chose not to. She chose to take the high road. Let's say it, the royal road. She chose to transcend. She chose to exquisitely align which is to choose her inner knowing above all else, above the beliefs of others, above the mainstream small-mindedness and the attention. She was intentional, giving attention to every single detail in order to be seen. That inner knowing that she had what it took to be the people's queen, that she would stand tall and honor her calling that she would fulfill her destiny, her calling, and was prepared to start forging her awe-inspiring legacy. Think of the bridges she forged for us to be role models as well, as daughters, as sisters, as women, as wives, as mothers, as uh, mothers to daughters, as mothers to sons, as aunts, as grandmothers, you get the picture, as neighbors brilliant, ahead of a time, a trendsetter, a role model indeed. So what does it mean to be seen, to be believed? She truly set the scene, wink, wink. Yes, that pun was intended. She set the scene for us to be courageous and for us to be seen for what we believe in. Now for the most important of today's discussion, yes, Here's where we get really real. It's you. You are the most important of our chat today. How does this and how can this relate to you? 
Do you believe in what you are doing? What you are being seen doing, being seen being, being seen as. Okay, I do get very excited. Can you feel my passion? I don't want to scare you away. So let's start a little bit slower. I know I just threw a bunch of questions at you. If we were sitting at a table enjoying a breathtaking view and we were feeling quite comfortable and relaxed, maybe sipping some bubbly, and I was to ask you, how are you being seen today? Be honest. What's the first answer that comes to you? How are you being seen today? Sometimes I hear I'm not being seen. I feel invisible at times. I'm not sure if it's me or my circumstances. Sometimes I hear I'm being seen as a people pleaser. I used to get great joy out of making others happy but lately, not so. Sometimes I hear I'm being seen as an unhappy individual, but really inside, deep down, I am very happy. It's just, well, I'm exhausted, I'm overworked, I'm overscheduled. Sometimes I hear I'm being seen as Nora, the nice girl you spoke of in earlier episodes. And it's not always easy to be nice. I get upset at times. Sometimes I hear I'm being seen as Rachel. I'm a rebel and I'm proud of it. Sometimes I hear I'm being seen as Fran. I was nice. I was a rebel. I was nice. And now, well, at this age, I am beat. So honestly, I don't know what people see me as. And sometimes, but not very often, I hear I'm being seen for me, my true self. I'm a straight shooter. I shoot from the hip. People can take me or leave me. Listen, none of these answers are right or wrong. I'm giving you a smattering of what I've heard over the years of working with women and a few great men. There's no judgment here. This is simply us having a conversation, a deep conversation. Me doing most of the talking and you answering a few tough, very personal questions. Then you run everything past your inner knowing, your inner guidance and take it from there. Remember, I'm not here to change you. In my mind, you're perfection, you're divine. You are you and I see you. I see you for all that goodness, all that exquisiteness. And most importantly today, I invite you to be seen by others for what you believe in. Your soul level truths, your heartfelt desires, your gifts and your talents. Because as an exquisitely aligned woman or man, you become exactly what you see and what I see missing in the world today. So let me ask you again, how are you being seen today? Is this question a bit unnerving? If so, it's okay. It's not something we speak about. It's not something we teach. It's not something, well, it's probably not something anyone else is ever going to ask you. But me, I like to ask you those personal questions. I like getting to know you on a deeper level. And I like to inspire you to get to know yourself even better as well. I feel it's one of my callings. I believe I'm here to help you discover your own kind of exquisiteness, the champion that lives within you. And I do that through conversation either here or with the opening to possibility cards or in my one-on-one -on -one work. And that's why I ask. I'm here to ask you those questions that no one else probably will because I'm here to help you make your world even more beautiful and your life even more fulfilling and for you to be the champion 
you were born to be. And the only way I knew, know how to do that is to get personal. Each time we meet, I'll pose a question. You may be able to answer it immediately, or it might irk you, or maybe it'll inspire you to take action. Whatever the case, I'm all about action. My number one strength is I'm an activator. I get shit done. Yes, mom, I hear you ringing my phone now. You don't like when I say that word, but I'm here to tell you I need to say it because it's my truth and it makes an impact. I do. I get shit done. Like this podcast, like YouTube, like the one-on-one -on -one work with my clients. I don't want them to be stuck. I want to get the stuff done. I want them to move on. I want them to transcend because I believe there's no time to waste. I learned that the hard way when my world was turned upside down when Mark was ill. I was recently reminded of this when I got the call that a childhood friend in our neighborhood passed. I was recently reminded of this when I got another call that my high school girlfriend passed. I was recently reminded this when I heard the sounds of endless sirens last Thursday morning I was, I was in front of the mirror putting on my makeup and I knew something was terribly wrong in our neighborhood. It wasn't until later the next night that I learned the gut-wrenching news that the precious eight-year-old boy who was riding his bike and struck by a car was going to be removed from life support. And now the passing of the queen. And so why... That is why I find it's time. I'm here to move you. I'm here to move you to take action. I want to move you towards the life that's been calling you in the wee hours of the night, the one that has you tossing and turning and wondering what's next. I believe I was born to challenge you, to stretch you the way I used to on the yoga mat. I believe I'm here to help you transcend the one size fits all life that begs you to, uh, to go along with mediocrity and remain in status quo. I believe I'm here to help you gracefully transcend like the queen. And if you don't believe what I'm saying, well, then the conversation ends here. Really, the end. Okay, I'm thrilled you're still here. With that all being said, can you see and feel why it's so important for me today to invite you to be seen for what you believe? I hope you're saying yes. So when I asked you, how are you being seen? If you answered something other than I'm seen truthfully for who I am, you know, I'm transparent. But how can I encourage or inspire you or in support you today to be seen even more for who you are? I'm extending my hand and reaching out to you. I'm telling you, I see you. I see your gifts. I see your desires. I see your truths. I see your purpose. I believe they deserve life to be breathed back into them. And as they start to make your heart beat even faster, well, that's when it's time to share them. You see, you see, that's when you believe you need to be seen to be believed. And that is your truth. Let's go a little deeper here. Do you believe in what you are doing? What you are being seen doing? being seen being, being seen as? If your answer is yes, that's awesome and awe-inspiring. But if it was no or maybe, let's take a look at this a little deeper for a moment. What could be holding you back? What are you afraid of? Fear. Fear is a four-letter F word. Yes, it is. It's a word that I really don't enjoy. I don't like it. It's an energy that the media loves to instill. Fear cup keeps us, even the best of us, from being who we are here to be. 
Fear keeps even the best of us from living the life that calls us in the wee hours of the night. Fear keeps even the best of us from realizing, knowing, and deciding to be courageous like Queen Elizabeth II, to be seen, to be believed, to be seen for what we believe. I've asked you tough questions. Let me share a little bit, something personal myself. I know that I am still afraid of being ridiculed. I am afraid of being judged. I'm afraid of people sending hate, hate energetically, you see, because I'm sensitive and it doesn't feel good to me. It makes me feel exhausted. It makes me feel heavy. But I know in my heart that I'm supposed to be seen. So I've chosen, I'm intentional. I put myself out there, like in this podcast, YouTube, on stage, in my one-on-one work, on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all those ways where I am seen, all those ways in which I may ruffle someone's feathers and cause them to send me hate, all those ways I believe I need to be seen to be believed. All those ways, they feel so right. They feel so right to me. They, they, they set me on fire. It outweighs the fear. I typically attract like-hearted, like-minded people. So I'm guessing that you too would find that the sheer bliss of being seen for who you truly are, your truths, your beliefs, your desires, all of that good stuff will always outweigh the fear. The fear will fade. Bliss transcends and you, you appear larger than life. Let's make Queen Elizabeth II proud as she looks down from heaven and sees us, sees us standing out in the crowd, taking her lead and leading with grace by example. Because as an exquisitely aligned woman or man, you become exactly what you see missing in the world today. Let's talk about the glamour. She was always dressed impeccably, fashionably, sensibly and comfortably. Knowing she wanted to be seen to be believed and standing five feet four, she knew being seen by those in the back of the crowd would be difficult. She took that idea to her tailor and to her hatter or milliner. She was prepared, she was intentional. She wore solid colors, bold monochromatic outfits, adorned with a matching hat so she could be spotted by even the youngest child and the person farthest away. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. She took everything into consideration. She was intentional all in all that she did and all that she wore. Being intentional is a game changer. I know we talked about it briefly last week. I love and adore the way she thought and executed everything. I don't I didn't know all of this about her till just recently and I find it real fascinating. You see I believe many of the same things. I too like to be seen even though there's fear in the background. For me I have always thought about it as a trademark. Maybe it's my fashion and marketing background. I don't know. I think I am most known for my red lipstick and my short hair. May I leave you with an exercise or more so a way of stretching you, a stretch for your mind on a daily basis. Each day, I invite you to check in and ask yourself, am I allowing myself to be seen? If not, what am I afraid of? And really listen to what comes up. What am I afraid of? The next question would be, am I being seen for what I believe in? If yes, thank you for having the courage to be seen and set the scene for others to do the same. 
If your answer is no, ask yourself, what is one simple step that I can courageously take to move closer to making that happen? Let that sink in and see what pops up. What is one simple and easy step that I can take today, something small, to move one step closer to making that happen? Typically, if I don't get an answer right away, I ask the same question throughout the day, and I try rewording it a tad. Then I wait to see or listen to what appears. Remember, we are looking for simple and easy to implement, something that you would enjoy doing. When we keep this in the forefront of our mind, when we are intentional, that's when the shift happens. That's when we can transcend. That's when those small decisions lead to be bigger impact, like putting on red lipstick or a sparkly necklace because the exquisitely aligned woman, she's hard to miss. She is seen. She causes a scene, like Queen Elizabeth, people gather. With your smile, with your grace, with your belief in your exquisite self. And that's when you become the change you wish to see in the world. Till next time, go on, be seen, be intentional, be visible in your beliefs. Be your own champion and be exquisite.